Uh, today is Unit 3, Lesson 5. There's our only class for this week, which is crazy. We're off starting Wednesday. Uh, so, as usual, look for the tasks to complete for U3L5, either under Assignments or on the Science 2 Canvas homepage in the weekly calendar. Today's date is the 23rd of November. Uh, in lieu of our little breakout room things, I don't want to give you any homework for the break, and so I want to make sure that you have enough time to get everything done in class today that I'd like you to get done. Uh, so we're just going to jump right in. Um, the first thing is going to be a little Canvas quiz, uh, but it's not graded, so don't panic. Um, this is called a formative assessment probe, which is I'm grading for completion, not for correctness. I just want to see what your understanding is. So you don't need to look up anything. I just want you to show your thoughts, like what is your thinking um, about this question. The question is, what are clouds made of? Uh, and so on the tasks to complete list, this is the do now. Click on that first link there, what are clouds made of? It'll take you to a Canvas quiz, which you just need to um, read about different opinions that certain friends have, decide who you agree with, and then explain to me why. I'm gonna time for 10 minutes to get through this, but I'll keep an eye on your progress. And once it looks like most of you are done and have submitted it, we'll move on. 10 minutes to work on what clouds are made of. Go for it, let me know if you need help. Um, so it looks like 10 of you went with Glenda, who specifically stated, Glenda's statement was, um, I think clouds are made of tiny drops of water or tiny ice crystals. Uh, two of you went with, um, three of you went with Rosie. Rosie said, I think clouds are made of evaporated water in the form of a gas. Uh, the correct person, or I would say the person who is most correct, most accurate in their description is indeed Glenda. Uh, so most of you were spot on. Uh, though, those of you who selected Rosie, um, you, you are, your thinking is very common, right? So that this is one of the biggest misunderstandings about water in the atmosphere and cloud formation is that a lot of people think it's just evaporated water um, in gaseous form. And then when it rains, that's when it's condensing into liquid and it falls back down. Uh, it turns out that clouds are liquid, right? They, it's weird to think, but they're either liquid or ice. Um, we cannot see evaporated water, right? Water, water vapor is actually invisible. And so that's one of the driving points that I'm gonna to try to bring home with this uh, unit. But again, that's a common misunderstanding. So I'm not surprised that quite a few, a few people went with Rosie, right? I can see your thinking with that from our own experiences. Um, great, so we're gonna explore a lot of that today uh, and try to drive that home with a little activity and an ed puzzle. Before I get into that though, I just wanted to quickly review the homework. Uh, one of the homework assignments was watching this video, A Year of Weather, and it's kind of cool. You can look up these, um, I'm gonna optimize my screen here uh, for sharing. There's no audio, obviously, but uh, one of the homework questions was, what's all this stuff in the Northern Hemisphere up here? What is most of the Northern Hemisphere currently covered in, in January? You wanna jump in and guess what that is up there? All over Alaska even down into parts of the US. Snow. Yes, right? So it's snowy because we consider this winter, but one of the main points I was trying to drive home is that it's winter up there because this is the period of time when the Northern Hemisphere is pointed away from the sun. So even though it's winter in the Northern Hemisphere, down here in Australia or in Southern Africa, it's actually summer and you can literally see how bright it gets in some of these spots. Um, whereas then if we jump ahead in time a little bit, um, I think here in the middle should be pretty good. This is a July. You can see a big difference. There's no snow now in the Northern Hemisphere um, because it's warmer, that's tilted towards the sun. And you can actually see, if you look at the very tip of South America in particular, um, oh, maybe we're gonna play in that, no. Uh, tip of South America, you can see a little bit of snow down there because they're experiencing their winter time, even though there's really no parts of Australia or Southern Africa that are close enough to the pole to get heavy amount of snow, like in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, I then had you look at two different storms, right? There was a typhoon that was in the Southern Hemisphere, which you should have hopefully noticed was going clockwise, because it's in the Southern Hemisphere. And then you watched a hurricane, actually it wasn't Barry though, it was Dorian, it was Hurricane Dorian. Uh, you should have watched move up the East Coast, which you should have noticed was moving on a counterclockwise rotation. Uh, but anyway, I like videos like this. I think they're cool. You can look up any year you want. So if you want to look at some of those, like, some like famous big storms, I think you can look up Katrina and stuff um, in these videos. Uh, then there was the, um, but anyway, the puzzle looks great. Uh, I'm seeing um, for this section, uh, good attempts uh, by everybody. And then the reading quiz also looks great. Seeing 11 attempts on this. Uh, everyone got the multiple choice questions correct. 
So were there any questions or anything you wanted to chat about about those homework assignments or anything you found confusing? All right, looks like we're feeling good. So you're gonna do an activity today where you're gonna make a cloud at home. You're gonna need a glass jar, some hot water, some hairspray or any other kind of aerosol, some ice and a metal lid, that's all you need. Uh, and you're gonna put things together. Uh, you're gonna follow instructions on, it's a Flipgrid assignment. So on the tasks to complete list, we are now on step three, cloud in a jar activity. Click on the assignment right there, cloud in a jar Flipgrid. It will take you to this assignment right here. And as once again, I list uh, the materials you need as well as alternatives, right? So if you don't have, um, you know, if you don't have a stove to boil water on, then hopefully you have a microwave or a kettle or just a tap that produces pretty hot water. Um, if you don't have a metal lid, then you can use tin foil or aluminum foil. Um, so those alternatives you can use there. There's a demonstration video I made, which I encourage you to watch and then simulate as best you can. And you do need to answer some questions. So in the Flipgrid video that you post, you need to show your little jar that you've made a cloud in. But I also want you to answer the question, what is the purpose of the ice sitting on the lid? And what is the white mist cloud that you're seeing made of, right? This is the whole point is what, is it, what are clouds made of, right? Uh, are they liquid water droplets or water vapor gas? And so uh, offer an explanation in the video. Uh, there's links to the Flipgrid right there, the same demonstration videos in the Flipgrid as well as the basic instructions. Uh, and you'll post a video to that. Uh, I am gonna time for 20 minutes to work on this. Then we'll come back together to check in. Uh, if you're not done in 20 minutes, that's okay. You can then, after, you can go right back to continuing to finish it up if you need to, uh, or you can continue on to work on the Ed Puzzle, which will be the next task. If you get done before 20 minutes, you are welcome to move on to the next task, which is an Ed Puzzle about the most recent chapter you read. I'll be here listening. If you have questions or if you can't find certain pieces of equipment, if you're struggling with something, just let me know. Otherwise, 20 minutes to work on the Flipgrid activity. Go for it, be safe.